Who wants stream? And then divide it up and then maybe we can make a collective thing out You want to know something funny? Yes. I wasn't recording until now. Motherfucker. Yes. It's these kind of things, man. Yeah. It's the kind, these kind of things. But it doesn't matter. So I'm here with uh, my buddy Rob and we're at the 710 event. Yes, man. And I only like two days ago, I re uh, like I read, I, I was like, 710, what's, what's that about? <laughs> and then if you turn it around, it's like 710 it because of oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. They could have come up with something better for hash, you know? Yeah, but it's in, the, it's in the same spirit as 420, so it's more recognizable for us. Uh, it's like in the same line of code. So uh, I guess. Uh, I mean, it has it has its its uh, charm, you know. It's a real subculture. The, the the real dabbing and the 720 people or the 420 people and the 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 people who really do adhere to the 710 code. And yeah, is there a code? There's a code, but it is the code word for yeah. it, so everybody recognizes it, and it's automatically yeah. some sort of bonding thing, you know. If 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 two persons who don't know each other hear seven ten and they both look up, they go like, ah, yeah, I get you. So that's uh, I, I like that. I like that. But you? Yeah. But maybe maybe it keeps the it keeps it in a niche. <laughs> Because you, it will always be a niche. It's already a niche, yeah. but it's uh, especially in, especially in uh, in the Netherlands. Like if you look at this event, it's quite yeah light. I you guess know? if I you guess compare it to 420, the, the 420 event that we had in uh, NDSM, that was packed. It was really full of people. But that was also small compared to what they do in other uh, in other countries. You know? I know, but there was more presence of people in the event. Yes, absolutely. Doesn't, it was. It doesn't matter. The the, the venue was was yeah. also not that big. No, so, but this but is was definitely a and more here you niche. Can see it's really like light, you know. The, the, you don't see participation, and maybe it's because they want to keep it low key. They hey, don't yeah. want too well, many people to come because of what it, we're doing here is not exactly uh, legal. Let's just say that, you know. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Although that's going to change pretty uh, soon too. Think? Uh, yeah. Well, I have heard uh, rumors already, and if I believe only like 20% of those rumors. It makes sense that there is going to be a at least a shift in the extract uh, world. I think at least in the market. Uh, what going have. more going more legit? Not legit, but more uh, accepted and maybe even uh, eventually decriminalized the same way that we are decriminalizing weed and hash at the moment. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah, but I, it's still going to take a, a little time. But yeah. if that's if that happens, I think that the the niche will widen a little. That there's more people who are going to be involved and interested in this this whole extract world but i think that it's going eventually when it when uh, especially when it's legalized let's let's look at what's going to happen state wise uh, when it's federal federally legal then it's going to blow up yeah but we are in in the netherlands we're not in america i know so here people i, no, I don't but the know trend i don't always know if, follows if market... four years behind yeah. so it's going to come here anyway and it's going to come here but in, there needs in... to be an abundance of, of raw material to be able to do yeah, that. That's yeah. why it's like that in the, in, in the US. There no, is an abundance of raw true. material. There is more of a scene outside of Amsterdam, like the center with the tourists with the high prices. Is there more? Uh, well, this this right here, this is this is very outside of the tourist scope. Yeah, I love it. It's just next to my house. I, I, I yeah. biked here for five minutes and <laughs> I'm here. Minutes for me, man. I want more events like this here in my yeah, neighborhood. I like it, like it. absolutely. Yeah. No, but no, the... Um, sort of trying to get back on topic here um, I think that the dabbing uh, 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 culture in, in Holland is definitely uh, still young and, and very small but it's going to get a lot bigger but it's going to take a little bit uh, of time a sort of time delay between America and Holland but eventually everything that's big in America will come to Holland and yeah. be big in some sort of way Actually, maybe they will sell the. Well, I think it's already happening that uh, North America is uh, is uh, shipping uh, their dab material over uh, oh, to, to yeah, Europe yeah, yeah. and especially to I already to, have to some Amsterdam. Canadian extracts uh, at home. So in those, really Where did, who did you get it from, Rob? Yeah. We want to know. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, so I don't want to tell. Uh, I don't want to say anything about the quality of it yet. Okay, I have I have a suspicion that I know where it's coming from, but. Yeah, it's interesting, eh? So uh, it's uh, 
a lot of influence. So I think the influx that they have there in raw material is actually already affecting the market here, like what you see with Kali weed, for example. Yeah. I hope that the the Dutch growers will catch on. You know, I hope this will be a driving force to get even better Dutch quality flour in Holland. You know, that they will have to uh, do their do better or something. Yeah, because I that's what you were trying to hint at, and that's how I've that I've been hearing that from other people.